Welcome back to Bard's Tale 3. This is Jay Rodman. Um, it's hard for me to organize my thoughts. Uh, so I have some news that for me is very exciting. For anyone watching may not be very exciting. Um, so a number of episodes ago, I was trying to figure out how to get a third caster going. And... Um, in the Apple II version, the original version of the game, if you added a new character to your party and went back to the old man, he would give you your reward for the new character. Um, just kind of automatically, not even doing anything for it. So they would get brought up to speed to level 35, or for a caster, you know, they'd be made an Archmage or whatever. Um which was a little awkward and then there were but there were further bugs if you completed a major quest like um re returning with the arrows of life from arborea then he would give you the award as you're supposed to but if you brought in a new character that had not been given the award that he, there would be a detection that would say oh you haven't been given the reward yet for this quest and your whole party would be given the reward again and you could satisfy this by just like say summoning an instant wolf and going in and getting the reward leaving banish the instant wolf summon an instant wolf enter you got about two levels per per in and out so you could get hundreds of levels uh in not very much time uh, so i think the fix was a little rushed because the result of the fix was if you started another character after the fact, they could sort of never catch up. They could never get those rewards. And maybe even I can understand not getting the rewards of going to the other worlds or other times or other realms or whatever you want to call them for a variety of reasons. Um, it feels like a one-time bonus. It's not essential. It's like two levels. If someone doesn't get two levels, no big deal. But the initial Brill Hasty reward giving going from level one to level 35 kind of unworkable to not have it um such characters would take several realms to become functional uh for the demands of this game so that's why i hacked it up i hacked it up and turned on the flag i, I edited the quest flag so i was able to do the quest again this had the unintended root effect that i figured out in the um, festering pit episode that my casters got brought up to level 35 my pre-existing ones which that's way out of the power league they're supposed to be um, an archmage level 35 is way more strong than say a warrior level 35 for a whole variety of reasons so that was a big unfortunate result so anyway, today I came up with a solution to the whole problem where what I did is I realized the version of Bard's Tale I had downloaded came with a third disc. The third disc was not a, a disc that was intended to come with the game. It was the game that like someone put together, the hackers, some, you know, re pirate release organization, some people who liked the game. I don't know. And one side of a third disc was just a character disc with ridiculously powerful endgame characters. And the other side of the disc was a full set of documentation for the game, which I imagine people found useful for downloading over a modem when they didn't have the documentation. It could like do a like live scrolling view. It could print the documentation. It seemed very fancy for the time. Uh, it had some other tools. One of them was a character disc editor, a character editor. Uh, I, I managed to figure out how to use it. It was all written in German by using the joy of Google Translate. I got to figure out things like, oh, I'm going to butcher this. Like, s s speaker and was to save and character Wahalen is choose character and bit the character disc Einlangen is insert character disc. Some of these I could figure out, some of them I couldn't such as this one I had no freaking idea. Uh, it turns out master all magic spells. 
So there actually was no editor for the spells that the characters know, so I didn't set that back um, because I, I can't. And it's also not that important because um, there's basically one spell that Griselda has that she would want um, that I shouldn't have is Mangar's Mallet. I can just choose to not cast it. And um, Elendor has access to a whole bunch of... Um, I assume she does anyway. I haven't actually checked. I guess we can check now. Uh, Elendor has access to a lot of uh, spells um, as a chronomancer that she shouldn't. Yeah, like all this stuff. Fatal Fist and Shusha, whatever it is, and Force of Tarjan. She shouldn't know any of these things. But it's very easy for me to keep track. Right now, she's supposed to know uh, Wither Fist and Cold, and that's about it. I also was able to calculate how many experience points they should have, because I know that the melee characters were given a base of 9 million, and they're at 10,400,000 right now, so I know that 1,400,000 is what they gained. And I also know that the casters were set to zero experience, which is weird because they get set to like level 11 Archmage and zero experience. But that's just the way the game does. So um, I set them to the 1,400,000 experiences they should be. So now I'm going to the um, old man and I can see whether I've earned any training with all that experience I got. Oh, I also calculated what their stats should be, because they were close to all 30s from all the levels they gained, and I rewound them. I didn't know what their stats should be, but I wrote a little Python to pick random stat values to subtract. Um, and my, my, my notes are here, but whatever. This is really just for myself. Um, and so anyway, uh, here, here's the interesting part. Alandor gets to level back up again. <laughs> And she got strength, which I hate, and constitution, which I like, and dexterity, which I like, and strength, which I like, and luck. Sorry, strength I don't like. So it turns out Elendor is actually, with the experience she's gotten, supposed to be level 9. So she should have access to 4th level Chronomancer spells already. Uh, which includes um, the Godfire, as I already decided that I was going to let myself use based on a made-up system that had no ability to track how the game should work. But anyway, uh, she would have gained Godfire and Stun, and now also Luck and Fade. Uh, fade makes us harder to hit, Luck makes us easier for us to hit them. That's what I remember anyway. I'll go check them later. The main one I was jonesing for was luck because of course my characters are missing all the time, especially when they get old. Um, for Griselda, I don't expect to get any level ups, but let's check. Yeah, Griselda still needs another million one hundred thousand to go up a single level. And that's just the way it's going to be for a while. Uh, Lillian needs 2 million because she's already level 13. And Archmage spells take... Archmage levels take a long time until 14. Okay, so... All of that out of the way. The next piece of business is to actually go somewhere. In the last episode, we read how we had give, been given a quest to go to Galidia and bring back Lanatir or if he won't come, or can't come, uh, the orb of Lanatir and the staff of something something. I can look it up. Um, we can talk to him. Oh, wait. I thought talking to him would tell us what to do next, but... I guess he knows that we don't have the proper spells, so I can have our chronomancer talk to him and we get this. Galidia, the land of cold, is entered by uttering Geli, as in the first letters of Galidia, and the spell to return is Ekul. 
To the north is Cold Peak. Your passage to Galidia is there. Now, if I talk now, maybe he'll tell us something. Hmm. He tells the chronomancer that time is running out. I really don't understand how time works here, but the old man seems to really know how it works, and I guess I just have to believe him that although we can travel through time, time is running out anyway. Maybe he means that the amount of time is running out. Maybe Tarjan is destroying time. I don't know. Uh, but I really should know the items I'm supposed to get, but whatever. One of them is Orb of Lanatir, the other is the Staff of Something Something. So uh, on our map, Shadow Rock, Cold Peak is up in the corner here. So to get there, all I have to really do is go west, uh, past the rocks, and turn north. You'll notice that the hit point totals and spell point totals of our two bottom casters have decreased because um, that's about what they should be now. confused momentarily. I was like, but I lowered them to like 402 because I got it out of a screenshot from the level where I did the hacking. But of course she just did a bunch of leveling up, so that's why the numbers don't align with what I set them to. I was momentarily confused and thinking I screwed up again. Okay, so here we are at Cold Peak. struggle with the copy protection for a moment. So here we are in Galidia. Uh, the first thing I have to do is make a new map region. Uh, the second thing I want to do is again set the intensity for the map lines to be faint so they don't interfere with my understanding of normal line of other types of indicators. So this is what usually marks the return point. We weren't able to see it in Arborea because uh, the Hawk Slayer was sleeping on it and that took priority in that encounter. If we had picked up Hawk Slayer and wandered around with him, we would have seen the well going. The idea that the ground's well worn there always suggested to me that there were a lot of interdimensional or inter-time travelers, well, more than you might realize. So. Somehow that just subtly to me suggested that there's a lot of background activity with the time streams that we don't get shown explicitly. I'm going to choose to not fight them because I'm actually going to end this. Uh, relatively soon. Um, we're in Galidia, and I'm going to put down the target, if I can find it. And we're eight north and one west of the Great Ice Keep. So eight south and one east is an ice keep. sure what to use for a castle. There's probably something for it. At the moment I'm going to use this column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a keep here. And all we got for decoration is a bunch of rocks. Ooh, boulder. Last time I was doing this, I used something like stone that was much less impressive sounding. This thing. I'm going to 
probably use it again anyway because uh, these don't obstruct movement. So somehow Boulder feels wrong to me being really sizable. Makes it 16 across. I bet it's 16 by 16. I'm gonna try that for now. Set up. What I'm actually gonna do. Stop, stop. Uh, I'm going to go back to the portal and go back to a place that is warm for now. I'm seven north and one west, so I need to go north one. That cool. Anyway, so that's the flavor of Glidia. It's a place that's totally frozen over and mostly barren. Okay, so that's my brief video. I fixed my characters. They no longer are overpowered. And we're going to keep on exploring the frozen land. See you on next update.